Hi everyone, it's Chelsea here, bringing you another segment of living in Southwest Florida. If you're thinking of moving to Fort Myers, Cape Coral, or any of the surrounding areas, and you are an active boater, then you may be really looking forward to our boating lifestyle. A few months ago, I was lucky enough to join Captain Scott Williams from Thrill It All Fishing Charters to discuss three mistakes that people make when moving to Southwest Florida with their boat. But before we jump in really quickly, it would mean a lot to me if you could go ahead and hit that like button so that the YouTube algorithms share this information with others and it lets me know what you'd like more of. As a thank you, here is some stunning water views from that morning as we headed out to the spot where we filmed. It looked like a painting. And really quickly, I wouldn't be good at my job if I didn't remind you all how much I love helping people from all over the country buy and sell their homes here in Southwest Florida. So if you or anyone you know of are even thinking about moving, then feel free to use the contact information below. All right, let's jump right in. Chelsea again. I am here with Scott Williams from Thrill of It All Charters, Fishing Charters, and um, we're talking about the three things that you should not do when, like, where where you um, are going to find pain points, I guess. Like, what what should you avoid when moving towards a lifestyle of boating here in Fort Myers? So, the first thing that you would say that people should not do. What's the biggest mistake that new boaters here in Fort Myers area will do? Mm, overspend overspend yep overspend okay. buy things that are way too much for uh, their budget or um, buy things they don't need um, maybe they they buy a boat you know and it might be 150 200 250 thousand dollars and um, the boat doesn't get any use out of the year maybe it gets used a couple times well what are you using it for you know, yeah what, what do you right you know um, or maybe the boat's just too big for what they're you know doing you don't need a large boat to still uh, enjoy the waters down here yeah so make sure you buy what you need yeah well and i think that's important too because it's not just the 150 or 200 thousand dollar or the purchase price on that example it's also the uh, maintenance on that because it's going to be a lot more oh, yeah yeah definitely some, some vehicles or some boats are going to have two engines as compared to one um and you might even not need, need that uh, vessel that has two engines but you bought it anyway maybe you only need a vessel that has one engine so now you're overspending uh for what you something you don't need mm -hmm. so. yeah and then it's probably a good idea then to get an idea of what you want to do with the boat first before going out and spending that money because if you're um just pleasure recreational using you know you're gonna have different needs so Correct. you don't need all of the the extra frills of the maintenance and stuff on the correct yes. yeah second thing people sometimes don't do uh, let's see something to avoid um you know the style of boat that you're uh looking to buy you know some people come from up north where a lot of metal boat metal hull boats are common and down here in florida you really don't need that because you're going to cook yourself on a uh frying pan um, you know, <laughs> it gets hot <laughs> it gets hot you know especially <laughs> summertime anywhere from may june july and august are the hottest months september can be pretty hot too yeah um, and that's when you're going to want to be on the water because correct you're going to be wanting to enjoy the sun the fishing is great getting a suntan is great that time of year um mm -hmm. the weather is pretty fair um not a lot of wind um it's a great time to enjoy kids family outings at the beach um, and if you bring a metal boat down here from up north, yeah, you're going to cook yourself. Yeah. So maybe more fiberglass or a wood, even even a wood option be a better option for you. Okay. So, yep. And then the third thing I know we were talking about earlier, and that is coming down clueless. So like educating yourself on, on the area, on the waterways. Definitely. Don't come out. Don't, don't just spend money on a boat and, uh, come out here not knowing the waterways. You, um, definitely get. Uh, there are a lot of opinions on the style of boat you want out here on the waterways um, for what you needed to do um, and you also need to have knowledge about the waterways um, coming out here there are channel markers there are shallow points and structure everywhere so you need to know the waterways and tides because you may tides, not have had to yep, deal with tides got, in the past yes you got tides 
Um, you got tides. Obviously, weather is always going to play a factor into what you're doing on the water. There are preserve areas that you might not be able to access with a motor. You might be able to get there with a boat, but it may be a no motor zone. So you can go in there with a vessel, uh, but you might have to push yourself in or use a trolling motor. You can't use a gas engine or diesel engine um, to get into that area. And there's also manatee zones too. Right. Um, and those are very important to us down yes. here. Yes. Yeah. You got it. We you love gotta, our manatees. Yep. And seagrass scarring areas area that you don't want to scar the ski grass bed so you get into some of these lower areas where it's only a couple feet deep uh if your prop is sitting there spinning through that seagrass that's uh, going to tear up the seagrass so you need to uh, you definitely don't want to do that you know yeah that's what they eat yep uh that's where our, a lot of wildlife a lot of fish crabs live in that area so right. you definitely need to know the area know what you're doing don't come out here and just destroy florida Right. Uh, well, and some of that also ties together, right? Like the tides, knowing the tides, knowing the water depth, the average water depth down here is much shallower than most people may realize. It's only an average yeah. of four feet. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing, you know, how deep your boat is sitting in the water and how much space you've got between that and the ground is going to be really important. We've, Correct. we've been sitting out here for like an hour and a half and we've watched three or four boats already more on a sandbar. Oh yeah. Nearby. Yeah. We, yeah. Behind us, there's a little sandbar area that kind of right is on the edge of a channel. Um, it's very, very narrow. And if you don't know it, if you're not a boater from this area and you don't know how to navigate the waters, you're going to hit that sandbar. So, um, yeah, about three to four boats have already hit that sandbar. Right. So, so had they known the knowledge, and the knowledge can change. I mean, these waterways have all changed since Hurricane Ian. Mm -hmm. This particular sandbar wasn't here six months ago, but with nope. the and with the sands changing underneath. Correct. And I would anticipate with, you know, now wintertime offers a lower tide level than normal times of the year. So as you get into summer and spring, you get stronger tides. So I would anticipate even to say in the summertime, you probably won't be able to access this area because there's going to be so much sand pushed up there. You won't even be able to get a boat in there. Interesting. So, so yeah, they're always shifting and changing. Yep. So it's really good to educate yourself and get some knowledge and people can do that like they can actually they can hire you and you know yep, and, and take can, classes and so forth mm -hmm, to kind yep of, they can hire private captains that do this for a living or even some of us um, when we're not busy in our downtime that we do take people out and just we might cruise and just have a good time in the water and just it's just a day where they can pick our brains and kind of learn the waterways and ask mm -hmm. all sorts of questions about Hey, what, 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 what in this situation? What about this situation? What do I do here? What do I do here? You know, and that's what we're here for. Very so. cool. Well, um, I thank you for your time. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Definitely. All right, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you didn't catch our other videos full of information about Captain Scott, then don't forget to go back and check it out. In the meantime, if you have any questions about the data or if you'd like to drill down and compare specific neighborhoods like, say, Cape Coral versus Fort Myers or waterfront homes or pool homes or whatever your specific circumstances call for, then feel free to reach out using the contact information below in the description below. Myself and a network of agents I have throughout the United States are here and they're ready to help you with your move. My video schedule can sometimes be erratic, so if you'd like more videos like this, then don't forget to hit subscribe so you'll be notified when we drop another one. If you are ready to get the ball rolling on your move to Southwest Florida, then there's a link in the description below to set up a personalized home search that'll be tailored specifically to you. Oftentimes when you search our web aggregates, it limits your capabilities. But when I build this search, you're gonna be able to have many more options available and we can begin to have a conversation about what your home in Florida will look like. Or feel free to use Cape Coral Fort Myers Real Estate.com for all the latest listings to hit the market and begin getting comfortable with our marketplace. No obligations. And don't forget to add me on social media and follow along as we post weekly articles and information that you may find handy and give you some insight as to what life in Florida looks like. As always, we really appreciate it when you leave us a comment and hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bells so that you can be notified when we drop future videos that may help you with living in Southwest Florida. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I wish you much health and happiness.